Hello YouTube, Paramecium914 here, and we are back with some more World of Tanks. I'm sorry I haven't been getting those uh, Rome 2 Scythia videos out. I will get back to it, don't worry. Um, but I've been having a whole bunch of fun playing World of Tanks, and that's just kind of what's been occupying my sparse free time lately. So, um, yeah, I'm here in my Churchill 1 tank. I'm here with Minty Fresh again. He's in the KV-1. He's right next to me. And uh, we're just going, we're, I think the map is called um, the North, or no, the Mountain Pass or something. Something like that. And uh, we're just going up the North. Um, we're both heavy tanks, tier 5 heavy tanks, so we're a little bit on the slow side, but we make up for it in armor. Um, I'm just kind of talking with uh, Minty Fresh, making plans and schemes and whatnot here. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're just going up. We're, again, we're a bit on the slow side. Um... I really like the Churchill one. Um, it's not my favorite tank, but I really do enjoy playing it. Um, I think it looks cool. Like I mostly got the tank because it looks cool. I mean, um, it's a good. I got it because it's a good tank too. And when I was would go up against them in other tanks, I would always hate to because the Churchill was just so hard to um, kill. But um, so I went ahead and got myself one. And uh, I mean, they're a little bit easy to outflank, and they get detracked pretty easily. But um, they have good armor, and the QF gun they have on it's really good. It's got some good damage on it, good penetration. It reloads pretty darn fast, which I really like. Um, it's just a good all-around tank. It's not a perfect tank, but it's I, I really enjoy playing it, um, especially when it goes my way, <laughs> which a lot of times it doesn't, especially when you get ranked up against uh, Tier six tanks. But... Um, yeah, so I can't really get a shot there. Keep moving up. Keep moving up. Kind of letting Minty Fresh uh, stay ahead in his KV-1 because, I mean, it has the better armor. Like, I, I should probably get around to getting myself a KV-1 at some point. I I really need, should have one of those. I haven't already because, I mean, they're kind of OP. Like, I mean, I'm sure if I picked it up, it wouldn't be that bad. But, eh, I don't know. So I get really lucky here, and I'm... Uh, set the guy's engine on fire and basically just kill him with one hit. I, I do manage to get two shots off, and I'm not sure which whether the fire or the last shot killed him, but I, I do get a nice kill there, so that's pretty nice. So I'm just moving up. And... Yeah. Um, so just keep moving up. And so, yeah, so, uh, today, it's time for today's uh, microbiology uh, terminology discussion. Today we're going to be discussing the cell membrane, uh, specifically the difference between an archaea cell membrane and a uh, eukarya or eubacteria cell membrane. Um, if you remember from uh, whatever biology class you took, or if you don't know, um, cell membranes are composed of two layers of, um, of lipids. There's these... Uh, um, diglycerides, I think they're called, and um, basically what they're composed of, they have a um, phosphate head, so it's a, a phosphorus atom connected to several oxygens, and um, it's got a tail section made of uh, carbon, uh, long long chains of carbon, and uh, the head section is very hydrophilic so it really likes to be next to water but the tail section is very hydrophobic and the result of that is it will sometimes form itself themselves into monolayers or even um, in the case of uh, the cell membrane uh, uh, dilet bilayers and um, so the hydrophilic heads will be facing out towards the water and then the tail sections will be facing in towards each other in a in a bilayer, so in that way the hydrophobic um, tail section gets shielded from water and it forms this kind of, this membrane, basically. And um, they, it turns out that they're actually pretty stable by themselves, they don't need really anything else to uh, hold them together, they'll just kind of spontaneously form these layers, and they've actually, like, you can, it's pretty simple to do, like, even without a cell, you can just um, put these, uh, uh, um, lipids in water and they'll spontaneously form like monolayers, like little bubbles and um, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool and um, so the, 
there is a difference between um, the cell membrane of, say, a bacteria and, uh, say, an archaea. Um, the, the problem with um, the normal cell membranes, the cell ones we have, is they break down at higher temperatures. And that's because the section connecting the um, phosphate head to the carbon tail section is an ester. It's a functional group called an ester. And um, basically what that is, is it, it's an oxygen double bonded to a, a carbon, which is then bonded to an oxygen. And uh, the carbon's also bonded to another carbon, and that goes off in the tail, and then the oxygen it's bonded to uh, goes off towards the uh, phosphate head. And the problem with this is they're, uh, they break down under high temperatures, and um, normally this wouldn't be a problem because we obviously don't live at, like, say, boiling temperatures, but... Um, for an organism such as uh, an archaea that lives in like the, those thermal pools you hear about at Yellowstone and like deep sea vents, um, that like they need a way to get around that. So they've actually evolved. So instead of uh, the section connecting the phosphate head to the carbon tail, instead of it, that being an ester, it's actually an ether. So it, the only the ma major difference there is it gets rid of the double bonded oxygen to the carbon, and it's much more stable under high temperatures. And so yeah, that's uh, the cell membrane and the difference between archaea cell membrane and uh, eukaryote or bacteria cell membrane. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Okay, so I've been kind of neglecting the tanks here. We won the last one. Kind of, we, me and Minty, we both kind of went up and we just uh, capped the base and won for our team. And now I'm in the BDRG1, which is a French tank. It's a French tier. It's the French tier five heavy tank. Um, and I, I kind of like it. Again, I, I like it a lot in, in a large part because it looks funny. <laughs> like, I, I saw one of these things in a match, and I was just like, I gotta have that tank. I don't even care if it's good. And as to whether or not it's actually good, it's okay. It's, um, it's armor. It's, it's pretty fast for a Tier 5 heavy tank, which is nice. Its armor is pretty bad. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad armor. Um... It takes a while to get to the top gun, but once you do, it's it's a decent top gun. It's got really great penetration. It's got a slow load time. It's got really good damage, and it's got pretty bad range. Now, it, that actually kind of makes the tank a little bit frustrating to play because, on the one hand, it's a heavy tank with like not great armor, but with this great gun. But the gun's only short range, so I get hit here. Unfortunately, only my rangefinder is destroyed. And see, I can't even hit that guy from there. It it aims really slowly too. So even on top of it having poor accuracy, it aims really slowly too. So, but um, because it's it's a really a, it's a close range gun on kind of a long range light heavy tank. I, like I don't know if that makes sense, but you need to be close to do anything, and if you're close enough, then your armor is not going to really save you like it needs to. So, I guess it's kind of like a close-range sniper, but I mean, really, like the only, the best use I can find for it is like in city battles when you're popping up like behind buildings and you can quickly retreat behind cover. But in an open map like this, it's not, it's not all that great. Like sometimes you can do something with it, but. Um, it's, it's uses are very specialized and, uh, it's not always the most useful thing, but I mean, I still like it. It's, it's fast. It's got a powerful gun, even if it is not very accurate. And, um, it, I, I think it's a fun tank to play. So yeah, here I am. Me and Minty are just kind of, we're not going up to the base to try to cap it, but we're trying to kill anyone who's going to. And I do hit that guy and get him with one shot. I mean... Minty damaged him for me, but so we're both. I, I'm be, trying to be a little bit cautious here because I know that if I move up too far, I, I'll I'll just die basically. And uh, Minty's getting hit by some guy, but he's in the KV1. I think he remarked. Yeah, he remarks that that tickles. <laughs> yeah, the KV1 is pretty tough. The BDRG1 is not as tough. Um. <laughs> yeah. So um. The problem here, if you can see on the map, there most of the enemy team is going the top right corner, and uh, we just don't have enough tanks up there. And I think about going up there. I try to provide some fire support, but again, my gun's not that accurate. 
But um, I'm a little bit slow, and I'm again, I'm worried that someone will see me and take a few pot shots at me and kill me. So I decided it's best to just stay here and hope my team can deal with it, which unfortunately they didn't do very well. And, uh, again, I'm trying to spot for them, trying to see if we can give a few long distance shots, but not all I can do. They still have most of their team, so I don't think that all of their team's up there, otherwise I would try to just go up and cap the base. And I took a shot at that guy, but I mean, there's no way to get him there. Spe especially since the target was moving. So... Tell my team to attack because they're for some reason they're just holding up back there. I don't understand that. I mean, some of them are artillery, which I think we have three artillery pieces, but um, yeah, I guess they're artillery, so that, that's why. But I think we had too much artillery in this map. You, you really, I, I don't think you really want that much artillery, like maybe two at the most, because I mean, they can. They can snipe guys from a long distance, and that's great. But, I mean, in close combat, they're, like, completely worthless. And I do get that guy. That's another kill. So this, this was a pretty good match for me, even though I do think I end up losing. Uh, and Minty's still alive, too. That's always a plus. Um, I think he outlives me in this one, actually. <laughs> and so I'm going up. I'm trying to get over this route so I can go help protect the artillery. Um, but... My fears come true, and I start getting hit from out of the world. Contract, destroyed. Eh. Not much I could have done there. So, Minty's here. It's all you, buddy. And... Give me a second now. Yep. Right as I said that, he blows up. So... Yeah. That's that game. So it was a good game for me. I got two kills, but... Still ended up losing. The, the thing about this game is sometimes your team will fail you, and there's not a lot you can do about it. Like, you can... It's really hard to, like... Unless the, the other team is really bad, like, it's really hard to be hero and just, like, get a gazillion kills. In this game, like, you're, you're, you're doing well if you're getting two or three kills, I think. Like, a, in, a, in a balanced match. So there's two artillery here and one tank, and well, that one got destroyed. I'm kind of hoping that this one can get a shot off and maybe do some damage against that guy. But track that is, is, We've lost the track. Is, he's artillery. Completely useless at short range. And he dies. So that's the game. And yeah, here's my uh, score panel. Pretty much the same thing that would have expected from the game. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully I'll get some more Total War out for you soon, and I'll see you next time. Bye.